And after the rut, deer will be hitting this hard, and that's where you want to be. Hi, I'm Adam Lewis, and welcome to Deer IQ and our High IQ Topics series. In this episode, we're going to look at my three keys, factors that need to be present and that you should look for to take a good buck in the late season or the post rut. A lot of people worry after the rut is over, thinking their chances are gone, but actually this can be the best time of year or one of your best chances to tag a good buck. But before we get into the nitty gritty details of that, a couple things real quick, especially if you're new here. First you'll notice we have an IQ ranking system where beginner is one IQ, intermediate is five IQ, and 10 IQ is our advanced content. This is true for our podcast as well as our blogs and videos, so you can best get content to meet you where you're at. This is a one IQ episode, and I'm pretty sure everyone will get something out of it. Second, I invite you to subscribe, rate this podcast, and check out our other content, videos, and blog. We even have a free journal that goes along with our curriculum-based podcast. If you take your deer hunting seriously and really want to fast track your growth, I invite you to check that out. And stay to the end because I have a few takeaways and challenges, as always, that I really think you'll benefit from and you won't want to miss that. Alright, now let's get to the three keys to tag a good buck in late season. Number one, find the food. You have to find the hot food source to find the deer. And after the rut, deer will be hitting this hard. And that's where you want to be. Bucks have lost a lot of body mass chasing does during the rut up to 25 or 30 percent of their weight and they have to gain this back to survive the winter so a good food source or the best food source in the area is essential because these bucks will have to hit it what's a good food source to key in on some of my top ones are cut cornfields as deer crave this high carb food acorns that have been left over in a woods possibly and look for red oaks because white oaks are probably gone right now. If you can find those, great. Also beans, if they're still standing, and late season food plot mixes, particularly high protein clovers, turnips, and radishes if you planted those earlier. So do some scouting, find the best food source in the area. It's critical to key in on that this time of year. Number two, hunt evening cold fronts. On top of this, when a cold snap hits, deer will be forced to hit the food, and many times during daylight. They simply don't have the fat reserves or food in normal bedding areas to adequately sustain them, and they will have to get up and hit the food, many times during shooting hours. Look for those days where the temps dip below freezing or more, and when they drop a good 10 degrees or more. Many times deer will travel long distances to relocate near a great food source, So if that's yours or you found it, these can literally be a deer magnet, drawing deer in and big bucks from outside their normal ranges. The evening is key here since you're hunting a destination food source. If you try to hunt this in the morning, all you will do is push deer off and mess up your chances. So resist the urge at all costs to hunt mornings. Now is the time to get very strategic and only hunt evenings when it is very cold. Okay, like this episode so far? If you do, I invite you to subscribe, like, or leave a review depending on where you're listening or watching, and maybe share this with a buddy you think will benefit. That really helps the channel out and our podcast grow and is greatly appreciated. Also, do you know your Deer IQ? Do you think you're Deer Smart? Why don't you take our Deer IQ test and find out? It's fun and easy. And it's linked below. Check it out. And if you like podcasts, check out the curriculum-based Deer IQ podcast, both on your favorite podcast channel and in video form on YouTube. It's uniquely designed by an actual educator to give you great content, along with our free journal, also linked below, carefully designed to really help up your game and success on deer. Okay, and now back to number three. Key number three, pay special attention to stealth. I cannot emphasize this one enough. You have to be completely unseen, unsmelled, and unheard while coming and going and leaving your hunting locations. You have to know where the deer will be bedded and plan your routes accordingly. Deer have been hunted all year, remember, 
and are very educated and on edge. Any little tip off will ruin your chances. So special care is definitely needed and you should not attempt to cut corners. Make sure you can get in silently, but also get out. Deer will be on the food source when you leave. So really think about stand or blind placement and how you will slip out and not push those deer off the food source. Also remember foliage is down. So keeping a visual barrier is important for that entry. Also think about how you'll stay undetected to all the deer sure to be there in their noses, ears, and eyes. It's truly a greater challenge than any other time of year. So a preset blind can be a great idea to help with extra concealment, but make sure it's set at least two weeks in advance so deer can get used to it. When exiting, you may have to have a different route, even back through a bedding area as deer will now be at the food source. So really plan that stand location to get in and out without pushing deer. It takes being very strategic, but if you pay attention to the details, it can be a great time to tag a great buck. These three things were all present for me in both 2021 and 2022 during my seasons in Ohio. I tagged a good 10 point and a wide 8 point and had to be very meticulous in these details to make both those hunts come together. But it really paid off for me and it can for you too if you pay attention to these three. And now your high IQ takeaways and challenges. Analyze your food sources on your properties or potential ones on public land where you hunt and identify the highest quality food source that you can find. Analyze your best setup over these sources and the least intrusive way to access and leave these so you can get multiple hunts over this high odds late season destination. Also analyze your gear and make sure it is dead silent. That you're scent free. I have an article linked below to help with that and also visually not sticking out, like skyline in a tree for example. Blinds may be your best option, like I said, this time of year. And if you really take your deer hunting seriously, get our free Deer IQ journal and follow along with our curriculum based podcast to be a greater hunter. It's on our podcast channel and on YouTube in video form. And I'll see you on the next Deer IQ High IQ Topics series.